is the first video in a new series that shows how I transformed my master bedroom from this to this. Now, you know I did my master bathroom remodel, so I moved a wall in here and really trashed the room. So I had to fix the crown molding and I had to replace the baseboards. And so, you know, it was a good opportunity to redo this room as well. I really couldn't get away without it. Now, I'm starting with this feature wall with wallpaper. Now, I had had plenty of experience with wallpaper in this house. In fact, 20 years ago when we moved in, we had a ton of wallpaper throughout this house. The bathrooms, the bedrooms, even the kitchen ceiling had wallpaper on it. And it was a bear to take down, and I swore I would never do it again. I'll never forget my dad working for days with a steamer trying to take down that wallpaper in one of the bedrooms. So what changed my mind was this Joanna Gaines wallpaper from York is supposed to be strippable, and it goes on much easier than it did in the past. So I'm thinking, all right, if technology has gotten better, I'm willing to give it a try again, especially for just a feature wall, just kind of to get my feet wet again. The wall color, by the way, is Revere Pewter by Benjamin Moore, in case you're wondering. And the trim is White Dove by Benjamin Moore. And we use that same white trim throughout the house, so it makes it easy on me. They say this wallpaper is supposed to be strippable, and I've seen some videos online, and they're a little hard to believe, so I'm actually going to put it to the test at the end of this video. Stick around. Now, if you're new to wallpaper, if you're probably less than, I don't know, 30, 40 years old, you probably never put wallpaper up before. So I'm gonna go at this as a, a beginner's approach. Now I buy my wallpaper from Bellacore. They have the entire collection of Magnolia Home wallpapers. So it was easy for me to find woven trellis. It's the federal blue color is the one that I have. They have a roll estimator built in. They tell you the size of the double rolls. Now they price it by the single roll, but they sell it by the double roll. I just put in 18 feet is the width of my wall and eight feet is the height and click calculate and it said I need six single rolls, which is really three double rolls. And then I added it to the cart. I know it's confusing, but you, you have to add six single rolls to the cart, even though they'll only send you three double rolls and it tells you how much it is. And of course they have discounts and things like that, but I'll put a link in the video description. Now, I really wanted to double check their measurements and make sure that based on my wall, which is 225 inches wide, and that comes out to about a little less than six meters, by the way, but I divided that wall by 20.5 inches, and that told me there would be 11 strips needed, and that means because it's an odd number, I would have one strip in the middle of the wall, and that would be my first strip, and I'd work in both directions. Now you gotta prepare the walls well. I didn't have to paint them again because they'd been painted many times, although I did patch a hole and I had to make sure that that was painted as well. I put down a couple of drop cloths and a plastic picnic table to use for a work surface. So here I'm measuring the middle of the wall with my wife. Now 20 and a half inches is the width of the wallpaper. So I deduct 10 and a quarter inches from that center mark, and that told me where the edge of my first strip would be. Now, if you watched my series on my bathroom remodel, you know I loved this laser level. And so I used it here again to point out exactly a plumb line up and down the wall. In the old days, I would use a long level and a pencil, but I didn't need to do that with this. Let's talk quickly about the products that I'm going to be using. I'm using a, an ordinary pump spray bottle, a seam roller, a smoother, a breakaway knife, a pair of scissors, a tape measure, and a laser level. Now I had a spray bottle like this. I use it in the garden, but I wasn't going to, I got a new one for this purpose because I didn't want to reuse anything that had chemicals on it. Now the moment of truth, I had to measure and cut the first piece. And just to make sure, I put some tape on it and held it up to the wall just to verify that it was long enough. Once I had the first sheet done, the rest of them were pretty easy. I just had to make sure I was aware of the repeat in the pattern 
and made sure I got 11 strips out of my three double rolls. I was also very careful to mark the top and bottom. So here you can see the table is marked with a B and I put the paper has a B on it as well. So I always knew where the bottom was and I always pasted them in the same order and applied them in the same order. So that way I wasn't going to get confused. Now this is the easy part. You just spray the water on gently. You can see in this close up how little water I'm putting on it. It really doesn't take a lot. And then you book them together, which is just folded over. And then you put it aside and let it just sit for a few minutes. Just long enough for me to actually dry off the excess water from the table. Now I'll just unroll the top part of that booking so that I can apply just the top to the wall. That's incredible. That's all I'm going to say. What flavor? Yeah. And just how helpful that is. That's like having a line drawn on it. And using my smoother, I made sure that it was lined up with that laser line. And I got out the bubbles on the top half of the roll. Now I used the smoother and the knife to hold the paper tight to the crown molding and cut it off nice and flush. Now the rest of the pieces work the same way, except of course you're butting the seams from one piece to the next. You don't want any overlap. And again, just be careful with your pattern. You gotta make sure that it lines up. And while the paper's wet, it's not a problem. You can always lift it to get any bubbles out if you need to and reposition it. And then once I'm happy with the top, I open the bottom and start working my way down. Now notice I am not lifting the knife as I'm cutting. I'm just moving the smoother, keeping the knife in the same position. And that means you don't ever get any kind of a ridge that'll be visible. And then it all just gets cleaned up with the sponge. You need a lot of clean water and a clean sponge to do this. And then just finish up with the seam roller just to make sure that the seam is nice and tight between the, sh the two pieces. I can't stress enough how important it is to have a nice sharp knife. The best thing about these breakaway knives is that you can remove the end and just break off a piece. Now I do this for every sheet. And that, my friends, is the trick to getting a really tight cut against the trim. You don't need to push hard with the seam roller. You just need to make sure they're nice and flat. Now for the end pieces, the process is exactly the same, except I make a relief cut in the top corner there so that I can cut the top piece and the side separately. Same process, I never lift the knife the whole way down the wall. And with a nice sharp blade, it doesn't require a lot of pressure. And that's what the finished product looks like. But what about stripping? Okay, after I installed that wallpaper, I came into my closet and I installed a piece back here just for this little test, this was a little scrap piece. And all I'm gonna use is a fingernail. Now I've never tried this before, but judging from what they said, it should peel no problem. And look at that. Wow. I never did that before, honestly. It's the only piece I tried this with. Now what I will say is, there is definitely still some haze of a glue up here. I would definitely sponge it off to clean it off, but man, that is, that is awesome. Unbelievable. 
All right, 20 years later, I have jumped back into wallpapering all over again. And with product like this, as long as it's strippable, I might not be so afraid to use it. So give it a try, even if uh, it's your first time. Just do one wall. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you're going to want to subscribe because I've got more videos coming, not only for this project, but for other projects. Thanks for watching, and give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey there, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be the first to know when new videos are posted. Look for Handy Dad TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit the website handydad.tv for more great ideas and information.